Hi Family Church, well here we are at Good Friday. I don't know if you've been following through the videos that we've been doing on a daily basis throughout this week, but we've been looking at the final week of Jesus' life and ministry here on the earth. And here we find ourselves on the Friday, the day of Jesus' crucifixion. And of course we know that in just two days time comes the resurrection and the celebration but it's important that before we celebrate the power of a resurrection, that we take a moment to remember the sacrifice and the pain of what Jesus had to go through on what we now know as Good Friday, the day of his crucifixion. And as we read through the gospel accounts of these final 24 hours of him physically being alive as he was crucified, there's so much that we could look at. There's so much that we could spend time focusing in on today. And I would encourage you at some point today to look through those verses that look at that final day of Jesus' life before he went to the cross. We could look at his trial before Pontius Pilate. There's a lot in that. We could look at the beatings, the whippings, the, the, the torture and the torment that his physical body had to go through. We could look at the mockery that he faced that people spat at him and laughed at him and mocked him and jeered him and forced a crown of thorns upon his head and said, Hail, here is the king of the Jews as they mocked him. We could look at the casualness of the soldiers gambling for items of his clothing. We could look at the powerful declaration as Jesus looked at those crucifying him and declared, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That powerful forgiveness statement. We could look at how he offered paradise and acceptance to the person who was crucified next to him, the criminal who was being crucified. We could look at his cry to the Father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But I want to just focus in on one particular passage of scripture, just a few verses that are recorded for us in the Gospel of John chapter 19 verses 28 to 30. It says, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said these words, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and he released his spirit. It is finished. Possibly three of the most powerful words recorded in the Gospel of John. It is finished. And when those words were originally written for the audience that John was writing for, in the Greek it was this word tetelestai, probably pronounced it wrong, but tetelestai, which meant this, paid in full. And this word would have been on invoices and receipts and documents uh, in that time, in New Testament times, where it would have said this, this debt is paid in full, it is cleared. And so those people who were reading John's gospel, who were recipients of this gospel, would have read it at the time and immediately would have understood the correlation between that word and the fact that Jesus Christ has paid in full the debt that was upon our life. I want to encourage you to make that statement. It is finished, paid in full, personal to your life today. This Good Friday, hear heaven declare that over your life, paid in full, it is finished. That because Jesus was willing to fulfill the plans of his father, the day that you were born again, you were handed a, a receipt or an invoice, uh, maybe with a list of all the sins that you committed, maybe all the guilt and shame that was upon your life. And if you were anything like me, that would have been a long old list, like a, one of those till rolls that just goes on and on and on. That was probably my list. And yet stamped across it, see this today, it declares it is finished, paid in full. The debt upon your life has been paid. Every sin, every bit of guilt, every bit of shame, and that is still available for us today. The problem may be for some of us that we're trying to pay a bill that's already been paid on our behalf. Maybe for your works, for your performance, you're trying to pay. But Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that we have been saved by grace. But it's not about our works and what we can do. It's about God's grace. Us being recipients of what God has given to us that we do not deserve. Whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, a few years ago, Kirsty and I went for our 10th wedding anniversary to an Italian restaurant nearby. And 
one of our favorite restaurants and we were eating and celebrating our anniversary and I went up to pay the bill at the end and the, the guy looked at me and said, you don't need to pay a single thing. I was kind of puzzled, what, what do you mean? I don't need to pay anything. And I said, somebody already came in and paid the bill for you. And one of our friends had gone in and, and, and so generously paid the bill for us. They said, whatever the bill comes to, we will cover it. Here's our card. And we walked out of that restaurant that night thinking, well, thinking we should have eaten more, but secondly thinking, what a blessing. But we did nothing to deserve that and we have been recipients. How much more than just a meal? How much more that Jesus paid in full for every sin, every bit of guilt, every bit of shame? Today we live in the good of what Jesus achieved. So when condemnation comes knocking at your door, we wave that receipt. It is finished, paid in full. There's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When sickness comes near your dwelling, it has been paid in full. By his stripes, we are healed. What's our response this Good Friday? Simply worship. And I would encourage you to take some time after watching this video to pray, to worship, to break bread, to celebrate what Jesus did for you and to respond with a simple thanks in your heart. Take time today to honour and to worship him, knowing that your debt has been paid in full because it is.